Hey everybody, Brett from Stardew's Gaming here, back with another episode of our Expeditions Viking Let's Play. So last time around, we found ourselves in the hamlet just south of the Old King's Burial Mound, where we're supposed to find our treasure. And we talked to the goatee who basically said that in order to get into the Burial Mound, we would have to make a human sacrifice of some sort. Either one, um, like regular person, or three thralls. And, uh, so I left it to you guys to sort of decide what we should do, and, um, basically the consensus was, screw him, let's just go in and forget the consequences, and I am sort of of the same mind, um, my thought was sort of like, if you want a human sacrifice, dude, um, you're gonna get it, it's just not gonna be who you think it is, so we are going to go in there and just take the treasure, and if they want to fight us, then they will become their own human sacrifices, so... Let's uh, get on moving. We'll head on in, grabbing any loot that we can make use of along the way. Um, between episodes, I've changed my equipment around just a little bit. Um, basically, I've been reading the forums, and it, it seems like a lot of people are having trouble with enemy archer spam, which is totally understandable because it, it is pretty rough in this game. But um, essentially what I'm reading is that having like dual wielders like Gunnar are pretty much a waste uh, because of how good ranged characters are. If you're going to be a melee character, you should have a shield. Um, Nephia will probably keep her spear just because I like having somebody who can attack from the second line. But um, I've given Ruskva a bow as her primary weapon, and she has a knife as her secondary. Kettle has a bow. Um, obviously, these two have shields. As soon as I get another shield, it's going to go to Gunnar. And he's going to keep his axe, but he's not going to dual wield anymore. And then Nephia, I might try to turn into a bit of a backup archer as well. Have her start with a bow, and then switch to her spear as the fight continues. But basically, everybody's going to have either a shield or a bow, because those are the two best things in this game. And uh, because of poor balance, there's really no reason to roll with anything else. So, it looks like we got some guards. Now we gotta talk to you. Four people, three men and a woman, stand on either side of the entrance to the passage grave, uh, chatting casually with one another. As if the concept of full-time guards to protect a burial mound in the middle of nowhere isn't unusual enough, they appear to, they appear to be uncommonly well-armed. That guy looked like he had chainmail on. Actually, both of them do. She might as well. It's kind of hard to see what she's wearing, though. All the guards draw their weapons when you approach the big stone slab that blocks the entrance to the grave. The woman speaks. Hail, traveler. What's your business? Um, we can make a perception or finesse check. I'm not particularly great at either. So, hmm. We might be able to make a perception check. We got a five. I think it's possible. Let's see. I don't think... This seems like it could go really wrong. Especially since we only have a 4, but we have a 5 in Perception, and this doesn't seem like it could really backfire. So, let's take a look at them real quick. Oh, we failed. They all wear chainmail and carry swords and shields, equipment far beyond what a small village should be able to afford. There's something very off about this whole setup, but you just can't put your finger on it. Uh, against whom do you guard this entrance? She shrugs, a casual gesture, but her eyes are darting between you and your herdmen. Against anyone who doesn't have permission to enter. And how might one gain such permission? A small nod towards the village. Perhaps she doesn't want to expose herself by raising her arm to point. Talk to the Godi Odkel down in the temple. Uh, well, we'd like to get in. Her voice takes off, or takes on a stiff character, as though she's reciting. This place is under the protection of the, of the underground ones. Only those who seek to pay their respects by way of sacrifice will be granted entry. Um, what sort of sacrifice? Another nod towards the hamlet. As I explained, you should talk to Oddkel. Well, we already did, and we're not too keen on his offer. So, uh... If you try to stop me from entering, uh, we're gonna kill you. The guard shifts their weight into what looks to you like a mockery of a fighting stance. Kettle raises a hand to calm the guards. One moment, please. He pulls you just out of earshot of his whispers. We can plainly deal with these four mules. But that stone looks heavy. Between the noise of the fighting and us trying to move the stone, we're bound to attract attention. Nephew joins you, spear already in hand. So we'll deal with anyone who comes as well. 
What do we expect, a handful of farmers? They'll run off again as soon as they see us. Yeah, I think we can handle it. I'm more concerned with the fight inside, to be honest. I've, I've watched other Let's Plays, and it looks to be a lot harder than it was in the Alpha. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Uh, we got the tanky guy, who looks pretty rough. Um, we got a healer, who's going to be our primary target. Um, she is a scout, so basically she's just going to spam demoralize, because that's all scouts do. And then we have an archer. So, how do we want to handle this? I think I'll put hack on on this. Actually, you know what? You can stun, can't you? Heavy swing, yeah. You know what? Maybe we'll try to stun him. Let's put, uh... We'll put hack on here. And attack. <laughs> I think it's going to take three of us. The question is which three. I could move Gunnar there as well. And then how much damage could you do? Between the three of them, that would be enough. So that would allow me to use Nephia and Kettle elsewhere. So Asleaf, I want you there, I think. And then go for the stun. And I need you to land this. Nice, we got it. Okay. Nephia, let's move you close, but not too close. I'll put you here. And actually, that would be enough damage as well. Now I could put Gunnar on this guy. How much damage would Gunnar do to that guy? Roughly the same. Yeah, you know what? Go ahead and attack here, then. That way I don't have to move Gunnar around. I can keep him in that spot. So you go here. Start damaging this guy. Um, Ruskva, the question now is how do I get you a better shot? And where can I put you where you're not going to get run up on? Uh, I think I'm going to get her over here. And 82% is not great. Um, this is a free action, so we're going to put that down right here, and that'll boost her accuracy a bit. It should be enough to where we can rely on that. If she misses, though, I'm going to be pretty upset. 95, okay, that's about as high as you'll get. Alright, good. So that guy's down. Um, I'm going to move you here, just so you're behind my tank. And then Kettle, what are your odds of hitting that guy? 75, that's not bad. You could range him as well. Put a ranging shot behind him, because I'm sure he'll probably try to flee that way. But we're going to shoot him and then move. Okay, so he's spotted now. That should boost our chances slightly. Oh, good, they're basically maxed out. Uh, in that case, go ahead and fire. Nice. So he's harried. He's a lot less likely to do any damage next turn. And then get behind and cover there. And that'll be our turn, I think. Unless, you know what? You can move. Get to there, at least. I think that should be fine. Nephia can move as well, but I don't really need to move her. So I won't. He probably should have moved a bit further than that because he's still spotted. Um, she's going to move into Asleaf, which is fine by me. And he was stunned, so he couldn't do anything. Gunnar, let's have you... Hmm. Maybe just shield hook him. Hmm. Let's see. Make an attack that is always blocked, but any damage not absorbed by the shield is dealt to the target's hit points. So that would be a good one when the shield is very low. Right now it wouldn't do a whole lot. But if you shield hook him, Nephia could probably finish him in one go. So he's exposed now. That will let her... No, actually. Interesting. I guess because he was stunned before. Uh, that's gonna take two pretty good hits. And I'd like to start focusing on 
Gritter here. Could you stun him again? And will you take an attack of opportunity if you do that? I don't think so. Nice, we got the stun off. Um, that would let you finish him off. Nicely done. Now, let's have you move to engage here. And yeah, just go ahead and attack. No point in getting fancy with it. Um, you may as well stay back here because there's really no reason for you to stick your neck out um, until you can attack. We'll have you move to there. Let's have you heal Asleaf, I think. May as well. Thank you. And then Kettle is going to step out, shoot that guy again, and then hide again. See 95, yeah, and that will be more than enough to kill him. When they only have one archer, it's it's almost too easy. Okay, going to attack my tankiest tank, and that's not going to get her very far. Um, why don't you do a heavy swing? Because this is this will be the last turn of the fight. And then uh, hack on. Do you want to do the honors? Nice. Well, that went pretty well. Definitely could have gone a lot worse. Um, nobody got, you know, injured or anything. Nobody went down. Uh, we still have some pretty nasty existing injuries, though. So, just a quick rundown of all the changes I made. Um, he has the heirloom sword now because I am using the engraved, engraved rusty sword, which is a little bit better. Uh, we picked that up in the forest. I am also carrying around a numbing tincture, which uh, restores 30 to 40 hit points at the end of every turn for three turns, but slows the user by two moves. So I figure he, being somebody that basically engages and then just stands there for a while, would be a good person to give this to. Um, I guess Gunnar wouldn't be a terrible person to give it to either, because he's sort of in a similar boat and takes more damage generally. But I figured our tank would be a good person to have that. And then um, I've given Kettle the tripwire trap, and I gave Gunnar the mead, so he can hit harder and stuff. And then Ruskva has the old bow, which was the bow that I was carrying but not using. And then um, I gave Nephia a willow bow that we picked up, but I don't know that I'm going to have her use it because she doesn't have any skill in it yet. And then I gave... I think Azlaith the cloth armor, that's not particularly great, but it's better than... Actually, it might be worse than what he had. I don't know. Anyways, we're slightly better equipped than we were. Maybe we can get something off of these guys. No. That's unfortunate. Why can't we take their chainmail? He doesn't need it. I didn't even have anything. Why can't we take the, the gambeson he's wearing? Maybe the archer? I get the feeling we're going to pretty much come up dry on all of these. Yeah, that, that was lame. Alright, into the burial mound. A sharp stench of rot like a garbage heap makes you gag as you inch past the stone and into the tomb within. Much to your surprise, faintly flickering candles light the room ahead. A few steps down the corridor, you smell something else beneath the rot. A flat earthen smell that seems to settle on your tongue. You start to feel lightheaded. I've always wondered what was going on here, because the game adheres pretty close to, to history for the most part. And so for something supernatural to be happening, it seems a bit out of place. So I was always, always <clears throat> excuse me, I was always wondering if it was like some sort of elaborate hoax that was happening here, or maybe something natural like mushroom spores that were making them a little bit like drugged. But yeah, I was always kind of curious what was going on here. And then like the, the underground ones that look like ghosts that aren't actually ghosts. Um, the corridor is only a dozen steps long, but it feels like you've somehow walked a mile before you're out of it. One by one, your companions stagger woozily out of the corridor behind you, blinking in the dim light. Ruskva speaks in a hushed tone, in a hushed, anxious tone. There's someone here, or something. The underground ones, they're in the shadows. Nephia shakes her head to try to clear the fog. They can't be, they can't be real. When the shadows are moving in the room ahead. You hear a low groan, and metal scrapes across the moldy dirt floor. Your head is spinning. 
So I've watched other Let's Plays of this, and this fight seems to have gotten a lot worse since uh, its initial inception. Um, also, again, with the complete bullshit deployment. Like, let us deploy our characters before a fight. I'm sick of my freaking healer ending up in the front. There's no reason for her to be in the front and Aslave to be in the back. No reason. So, how do we allocate attacks here? Because she needs to not be in combat. Uh, I can't move anybody because they're basically all engaged except for these three. Um, let's see. If I recall correctly, the first enemy reinforcement wave, these didn't used to exist before. It used to just be like one wave of enemies back here that you had to deal with. But now you have to deal with four waves. So, wave one is, you know, in effect. Two comes from here, if I'm not mistaken. Three from here. And then four from there. If I'm remembering correctly from the other Let's Play. Uh, let's have you move... I don't know, to there or something. They're all engaged. They're not going to go anywhere. So you can move to here and just shoot somebody in the back. Um, both my tanks are not engaged, so I can put them where I, where I like. Uh, that won't work. It's going to like take you through every attack of opportunity, basically. Move you over there so I can move these guys a little bit easier. Uh, who am I using? Why does it keep grabbing her instead of Aslave? Still can't get you far enough. Which is a damn shame. Um, well, this puts me in a pretty tough spot. Let's get Hack on there. Okay, that's a start. Then if you could finish this guy off. You're flanked now, good. Come on, crit. Nice, okay, there's one down. And then move here. You're flanked now. And like double flanked or something maybe. That's a 95, which isn't terrible. Um, we might be able to get a kill here. Because Nephia hasn't attacked yet. You, of course, are not able to charge from where you currently are. So... Just attack, I guess. Nephia... That's not very much damage. Why are you hitting... She's injured is probably why. No. Neither of those is affecting her damage. Whatever. If everybody attacks this guy, we should be able to kill him. Actually, Kel might be able to do enough. 95. Yeah, that's as good as we're going to get. Okay. So, that leaves just the one. And I really have no way of dealing with him. Is there anything better that you can do? Demoralize doesn't work on these guys. We can try to poison him. 72%. That's not great considering how point blank you are. Can you guys move any further, by the way? No. Uh, we could try it. Wait, that uses my... Attack. The target gets the status effect Venomous. Attacks apply poison on hit. No, that doesn't help me this turn, so I'm not gonna do it. Um, just shoot him, whatever. Do some damage. We need to deal with him next turn and do it effectively and efficiently because the following turn we're gonna have reinforcements spawn here and we want to basically be aligned along these hexes to um, be ready for it with our tanks in the front and of course he's gonna do a bunch of damage to Gunnar Gunnar, feel free to hit him right back. Nephia, you can't attack from there. But you can from here. Cool. So at least we did that pretty efficiently. Um, right, so let's have... I don't know how I want to arrange this, because we can't blockade the whole thing. At least not really. 
Mm. Also, I want to heal him with her attack. So, got to do this really, really carefully. Um, let's put you... Do we go there? No. It's, it's four across no matter how you slice it, so... I'm almost inclined to go back a bit. But I kind of want Gunnar over here. So, if you could step back, and if you could step back, that would allow him to get to there, which is good. Then you can move there, I guess. Then you're going to heal him. Need a hand? Excellent! I prefer these two swap, because he's our main tank. He's going to take damage a little bit better. So let's do that. I want you ready. I'd also prefer if you were ready. I want you there so that you can attack basically anybody that engages them. And then Kettle, I want you here and I want you to do an interrupt. So this is basically an overwatch. All right, here they come. So he's gonna get the interrupt and that's a pretty good hit. He's gonna move there and probably attack her. Yeah, I figured as much gonna demoralize and he's probably gonna move to here stretch out and kill her no he actually didn't I'm actually pleasantly surprised by that um, right so how do I want to handle this we got to be really efficient with these uh, waves because every two turns a new one spawns and the next one's gonna come from behind us so how hard can you hit them and I can charge so I can do more damage um, I'm wondering if you can get the kill on him. And then what I should do is probably have Azleif move here and stun that guy. Hakon might be able to kill this guy with a little bit of help. So, yeah, go ahead and charge him. That'll do a little bit of extra damage. I think you can do enough to finish that, but... God, is your accuracy bad. You have, like, no chance to hit, even if you move up. Um, let's get you there and then there. Okay. Asleif, step in here, and I need you to stun this guy. Nicely done. Um, the thing that sucks is that actually opens them up to be much, much easier to kill. But... Um, if I stun him, he can't attack during his turn where these guys can, so I'm, I should kill one of them. So, let's get rid of you. No more demoralizing for you. Um, and then I'll actually move you around. Because why not? I might move you into contact with him as well. Um, I wish you were more accurate really wish you were more accurate.